Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I have here an article come f coming from MSN um, via, or the Telegraph coming via MSN, and uh, it's just about um, Yevgeny Prigozhin, who is the boss of the Wagner Mercenary Group, doing something that I don't know uh, how to look at it. Uh, could be an insult. Uh, I don't. I can't take it as a. Uh, could be a prank. I can take it as a good thing, nevertheless. Um, and uh, on the 8th of uh, March, there's the International Women's Day in many countries on this planet. I don't think the United States uh, really has that big. They have it differently. They have the Mother's Day, but which is not the 8th of March. It's a different day. Where I come from is, uh, as I said, March the 8th. So that's one thing with Prigozhin. I'm going to uh, tell you what this guy did. And... Uh, the rest are some um, reports, some statements made by interviews taken, I don't even know if they're really interviews, with people, with uh, fighters in Bakhmut, Ukrainian fighters, talking about the, um, the situation over there. So it's not the Russian media taking this, and it's not the Russians who are interviewed. They are Ukrainians by the, I'm guessing, uh, the Telegraph somehow got this, because the article is coming from Telegraph. All right, so let's uh, let's get going with this article. So as I said, it's from the Telegraph, MSN, today, which is the 6th of March, 2023. Wagner founder, this guy right here, sends truckload of champagne to Ukrainian women. Uh, well, to Ukrainian women that lost their men in the war? to Ukrainian women in general, because uh, that could have a different meaning. Uh, but still, I don't think that they need your champagne, but <laughs> it's a very, whatever. This is the, the guy, Evgeny Prigozhin, the big uh, warlord over there with uh, military uh, magazines right there. Automatic, I don't know if he, uh, he's got a weapon over there too. Mm, okay. You know what's interesting? He's, he's newly shaved. Oops, I don't want that. Newly shaved. <laughs> so he's not fighting the war. You're not newly, uh, not you newly shaved or freshly, cleanly shaved. You know what I mean? But hey, what do I know? Let's keep uh, reading this article with Mr. Prigozhin, and not only. Wagner Group founder Yevgeny Prigozhin, and I'm quoting, sent a truckload of champagne made in Bakhmut to Ukrainian women to mark International Women's Day as his mercenaries appeared on the cusp of victory in the eastern city now you can say well you know in the military you still you have to have you know a certain kind of uh, hygiene and so on i understand there's certain standards but uh when you are in the trenches i don't think you shave uh, and if you do good for you i probably not have time for something like this it depends on the situation of course the criminal linked tycoon mockingly signed one case before it was loaded onto the lorry in footage released by his personal press service on the Telegram messaging app. Wagner captured the Bakhmut Champagne Winery and Sinyat Enterprise in the eastern part of the city in December. The Telegraph could not in immediately verify whether this is where Mr. Prigozhin sent the sparking wine from. Well, it's sparking wine or it's champagne? Well, it's, uh, if you go and buy sparkling one, is one thing. If you buy champagne, it's a totally different thing. But any, anyway, what's your name? Story by Joe Barnes. Okay. And Bauman. Very thing, Bauman. Okay, good. His uh, boastful claim came as Western military and, and analysts said Ukrainian troops were likely conducting a, and I'm quoting, limited tactical withdrawal from the besieged salt mining city of Donetsk region of the Donbas. Moscow's forces captured new positions in eastern, northern and southern parts of Bakhmut on Sunday. Yesterday, Russian military bloggers reported. It was also claimed that Wagner forces had pushed Ukrainian troops back into the center of Bakhmut in a sign that Russian troops are closer, close to encircling the city. Here it is. We are surrounded. Vladislav, 27, a Ukrainian fighter, Wounded during recent fighting in Bakhmut, told the Telegraph. Now, I'm going, now practically all the dominant heights 
are under their control, so it has become harder to move unnoticed and, in fact, we have already been surrounded from three sides. The situation is extremely difficult, our guys are real lions fighting for every centimeter of their land. Despite the difficulty, Vladislav said he believed it was unlikely that Ukrainian forces would be ordered to retreat. Not that they want would be ordered. Without an order to retreat, no one will abandon their positions, but I am 99% sure that this order will not happen. Now, is this uh, lamenting about it or... Anyway, and I'm quoting, we will fight to the end, okay. Our guys are as motivated as possible and have already, already gone through everything that is possible. Okay, at first the Russians did not save ammunition at all and literally bombarded us with iron. Now it become harder for them and they began to use them more sparingly because they are running low. Well, that's what you think. Maybe you are not too many targets anymore. Is it possible? Because they eliminate most of you? Could that be possible? But it has always been hell both at the very beginning and now. Now it has become harder. The guys who hold the defense there are real titans. Well, unfortunately, look, look over here. These were shots, right? Jesus Christ. Anyway, in recent days, Ukrainian troops defended the city against countless human waves of unprepared, poorly trained Russian troops, but they still won. I don't understand. Stop saying that. Stop saying that the Russians are poorly trained because you, you just create the, the uh, impression that the Ukrainians are even worse than this. If the Russians are still winning because they're advancing with this, with poorly trained Russian troops, then what does that tell everybody about you? And you are defending. That means you need what? A three to one, four to one ratio or the Russians. So that tells me these guys are what? I know what, the, what, what is the <clears throat> point these guys are trying to make, that the Russians are just throwing... Uh, millions of people like in the Second World War and they don't care about the human lives. That's the point they want to make. But on the other hand, could be interpreted by people who don't fall for idiot, uh, you know, propaganda like that to this one. If you lose, if you leave the propaganda to the side and say, yes, the Russians are don't care for human lives. So that's aimed at the, the, the Russian military and the public. That's where that's aimed. And for us, oh, the Russians are so bad, they don't care about that. I don't have any evidence to support, or they don't have any evidence, just this. But by saying that, you immediately can think they're still winning with poorly prepared. That means you're even worse. And you're not because you have Western weapons. So you're good, but they're still winning. So it's, it's a big contradiction. These things do not meet. It's very far away from meeting. Not even... Uh, anyway, you, uh, you got my point. I'm just analyzing this thing. It's just doesn't make a, a sense. We have no support. Now that's a bad thing right here. And I'm quoting, a mortar could be attacking us for three hours. We wait for support. There's no support, said Serhi, a Ukrainian soldier defending Bakhmut. And I'm quoting, they tell us, hang on, you will get support in half an hour to an hour. We wait for seven hours. There's no support. A comrade also named Serhi added. Yeah, that's great, right? Mm. Ukrainian forces are likely conducting a limited tactical withdrawal in Bakhmut, although it is still not too early to assess Ukraine's intentions concerning a complete withdrawal from the city, it said. How do you communicate here? The Ukrainian defenses in Bakhmut remain strategically sound. Yeah, I can see that. Not even 50-50 chance of coming out alive. So Boris, Boris, Boris Yeltsin or Boris Johnson? Boris Becker, a Ukrainian combat med medic told the Kiev Independent that of the 500 strong battalion he traveled to Bakhmut with in December, just 150 soldiers were left. And I'm quoting, when you go out to the position, it's not even a 50-50 chance that you'll come out of there alive, Sherhi added. It's more like 30-70. So, uh, between these reports, these interviews and... Uh, uh, what's his name? Prigozhin. That's a, that's a disaster over there. And uh, as I, I, I said I said before, and I will keep saying, these guys are just used. Are just used and uh, it's, it's, I think, um, I don't want to say very clear, but it, it's clear that uh, the guys who will be profiteering out of this 
are not going to be the Ukrainian people and uh, it's going to be some others who do not really care how many people go over there, how many people die and they keep pushing, you know, the patriotism, mm, let's fight the Russians, blah, 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 blah. And then the other guys over there getting ready with their money. Actually, not like that or like that because they don't have the money. They have only the numbers on the computer, not even back by anything. So then, then they're going to come and invest. They're going to help you. They're going to turn you into Switzerland in three years, like they told Romania after uh, 1990 revolution. They say, well, in five years it's going to be Austria, like Austria's level. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, could have been, could have been, had the potential, but it's not really like that because it's much more than that. It's so much, uh, uh, it's so, so many interests that collide. The same, do you think the Ukraine is going to be like, oh, after the Ukrainians, let's say, uh, Russia doesn't exist anymore. Do you think the Ukraine is going to be all of a sudden change into uh, Switzerland, as I said? No, it's not going to be. Why? Because without the Russians, they didn't get over there. Without the war, they were not over there. On the contrary, they were going down and down and down. So how do you explain that? If Ukraine was the cradle of democracy in Europe and there were not, no corruption and they were all... And they were. I'm talking about the nation. But on the other hand, the leaders come from the nation. So when we cry about uh, Kamala Harris or Biden or Sunak, not Sunak. Sunak is just a... is much better than uh, the other alternatives that, we, that they had, I, I can believe. Boris Johnson and uh, Lizzy Lazy Trust. But oh, look at Germany. And when you look at those guys, where are these coming from? They come from the midst of their, of their country, of their nations, except uh, in Ukraine. Still from the midst, but anyway. I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm upset, angry with uh, uh, the fact that some people are really so ruthless. This thing could have been avoided in uh, 2013 before those guys wanted it. And even before that, maybe 1991, 1992, that could have been avoided. But hey, some people wanted to come over, Red Rover, Red Rover. And the other one said, where are you too close? Hey, you're too close. Hey, don't stop coming. Stop coming close. You're gonna put rockets here, missile? Uh, we're gonna react. You don't, gonna, you don't wanna talk to us? All right, we're gonna do this. Hey, it sounds like, oh, they were pushed into that. Well, definitely that's evidence to support the fact that some groups came closer with weapons towards another group. What is the other group supposed to do? And if you re reverse the, the situation, the other group will be immediately attached. Let's put, I don't know, a Chinese uh, base in um, Vancouver, Canada, and see how the United States will, uh, oh, it's okay. I put some missiles as well, and I don't know, in Mexico, Mexico City, shoot out in Mexico and see how those guys, uh, the Americans would like it. Or in, I don't know, Honduras, on Paraguay, uh, is it kind of like, uh, you know, in Cuba. Just a few bases over there with some rockets to defend our western flank. Do you think the Americans will be like, oh, it's okay. And they will nuke that, not talk, try to discuss, try to write something down. They will nuke it in, they will say, take those out, out. no, boom. <laughs> well, self-defense. You, what are you going to do about it? Not even that because you're already seeing Jesus at this point. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just, my friends.